If you ever wondered how to create and develop it, the type of charisma that radiates from within, well, you clicked on the right video, ladies and gentlemen. Or if you ever wondered how to develop a type of charisma that maybe you're not the most charismatic, maybe you're a shy person, but if you ever want to create the impression of charisma, I call it the outer form of charisma, then you clicked on the right video because this video is part of my course, The Charisma Pr Blueprint, where I teach you how to develop inner charisma and outer forms of charisma. It's a course that I created and recorded in London. It took me about a year of, of worth of research, um, but I believe this course, if you, if you just watch this video, um, and then if you actually purchase the course, you'll be known as somebody who's charismatic. I'm not even kidding with you. Like you, you will have some form of charisma, no matter how born you are, no matter your age, no matter what you do. If you just do what you're about to see in this video, you will be able to radiate some form of charisma. Um, so anyways, if you guys enjoyed this video and you want to pre-order my course, uh, Charisma Bl Blueprint, click on the description down below where it says pre-order Charisma Blueprint. It's going to be $99 when it comes out. So you can pre-order it right now at the discounted rate of $59.99, uh, okay? Plenty of people paid hundreds of dollars to attend this seminar. They traveled a bunch of places. They flew planes to come and see it. And you guys will be able to have access to it in your home at a more affordable price. Anyways, I'll see you guys inside. Yeah, you guys, a lot of you guys will listen to what I said yesterday. And I'm not going to lie. What I said yesterday is it's pretty much a big, I was, I went home yesterday. I'm like, that sounded like PR. Like, I swear to God, it's just because I took like, I remember taking PR many years ago. And it's just a lot of the things was public relations. And I talked to a buddy of mine about public relations. I called him. And yeah, he said the same thing. I was like, yeah, that's, this is pretty much what we teach to people who are building up an image, to musicians, to actors, to do this. What you dress, what you color, what you, the symbols you surround yourself with, um, the look that you have, it's all fabricated, right? And that's why a lot of these celebrities, there's a chasm between how they appear on camera and on the TV shows versus how they are in long form conversation. Right, I bet a lot of us who who knew Elon Musk, we thought of him differently as opposed to when we saw him on the on the Joe Rogan show. If anybody saw him, he's very awkward the way he talks. Right, you wouldn't expect him to be so like to talk like, just like just a weird way of talking, but that's because that's his personality in real life. But what we see in our mind is the image of Elon Musk. Right, so what we talked about yesterday is about image creation, and the issue with that is that at a distance is perfect, right? At a distance, if you're able to maintain distance between you and the person whom you're projecting these things to, it works, right? Which is usually in work situation. It's usually when you're trying to gain a promotion. It's usually when you have, when you're like in a neighborhood and you have your neighbors and you wanna you know, give a good image to the people around you, to not have a bad reputation. You're not trying to gain anything from them, but at the same time, you don't wanna look like a bad person, right? Or when you're trying to gain alliances, maybe at an organization, or when you're trying to get elected, maybe you wanna be the pastor of a church, or maybe you wanna be elected to this position or that position. All of these things are important in life. I don't care what you, what you say. And this type of charisma that we talked about yesterday is the public charisma is a type of charisma that we need in, in society. It's, it's, a, it's a mask. At the end of the day, it's a mask. It's not you, right? Um, and this mask is a, just like any mask. You put it on and you put it off. And a lot of politicians, when they're around their friends, they're completely different. They have completely different rules for themselves. But in the public, in the public world, they put on another face, which is usually of higher morality, right, which is usually hip, a little hypocritical, right, and that's because they're playing an image. And it kind of like, it kind of shows you why politicians are so hypocritical. That's because that's part of the game. It's because they're, they never really show you who they are. And eventually, the difference between their personality and what they portray is going to be revealed and it's, they're going to look hypocritical. But in order to be in that position, unfortunately, you have to play that game. It's undeniable. And if you don't play that game and you want to be the honest politician, then what they're going to do, they're going to use your honesty against you. Like, for example, there was a politician. There's a politician right now in the United States. His name is Ramachundra. I don't know. Sounds like a sounds like an Indian god. <laughs> Ramachundra. I don't know. Sounds like a cult leader, actually. Though He was actually a cult leader. And so he said that most of the things that he did in his life were to 
to help himself. Like he did charity when he was a, a kid to build up his college resume, right? And he said he reveals that because it's, because most politicians say that they do things because they're unselfish, because they're doing it for the greater good, right? And he's like, I wanna, I wanna be a difference and show you guys that a good politician can still do things and admit that they have selfish intent. So you know what happened when he did that? When he did that? People who don't like him are saying, oh, well, you know, you, you, you're a selfish person. You, you say yourself, you do things for selfish reasons. And he's like, well, I'm doing it because everyone else does it. He's like, oh, I don't do that. So it's kind of like, it's so dirty. It's such a dirty game. You can't admit that. You can't admit that you have normal selfish tendencies. You can't admit that, that you've done wrong. Like, it's fucking crazy, man. Because when you do it, these people, these, the, the, the dishonest ones, will then use your honesty and, you, and create an image about you that you're an evil person. Oh, but they then cloak themselves by being the, the one that's exposing the dishonest person, right? So that's why it's unfortunate. Um, and that's why you guys have to play this game. Um, and if you don't, then you're gonna leave your public image to the eye. I mean, you, you're gonna leave that ability for someone else so for someone else to form your public image, if that makes any sense. All right. Um, so something that you're gonna you're gonna struggle with after you're done with this seminar is that the things that I talked about yesterday, you're gonna forget to do. That's that's the problem. You're gonna forget it. Do we get recording? You can record it. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna send you guys a, a complete recording of it. It's gonna take like a week or two, maybe less. But you're gonna forget everything that I said, and it's gonna sound nice now. But when life happens and distractions happen, you're gonna forget everything that I said and go back to your normal way of doing. And you're gonna gain the satisfaction of knowing this, these strategies, and you're like, oh wow, that's so interesting. But you're never gonna really do it. I, I know that because that's how people are, right? And I'm hoping that me saying this will maybe perk up your ego and say, you know what, I don't wanna be that person. Because these strategies do work. And the path to charisma is not really about being the most funny person. It's, it's, it's just about public image. It's, all, like, it's funny how that works, right? Because when you think of charisma, you think of some quality that's like, oh, he's so interesting, he's so funny. But it's really more about image manipulation. Like we all have a self, we all have an image that we have into the world. We are all actors in, this, in, in the stage of life. And if you, don't, if you wanna deny that, and you don't want to accept that and use that to your advantage, then somebody else is going to make you into an NPC, a non-playable character, and you're, gonna, they're gonna, you're just going to be a role player in this whole situation. The ones that are able to craft their image like it's an art, like in, like an art piece are the ones that are going to be able, who are people going to call charismatic, interesting, alluring, mysterious, all of those qualities we all can attain. And when you attain that, it comes with influence. People want to hire you, people want to work with you, it, it just, it, it lifts you up. Um, so yeah, hello. Yeah, come in, yeah. Do you guys have any questions about yesterday, by the way? Any questions? From yesterday? Yeah. So you're asking how how does distance relate to relationships? Yeah, Healthy relationships. Too much distance. Yeah. Well, I mean, we could look at the opposite, right? What happened when we didn't have distance during the pandemic, right? We could look at the the opposite effects and maybe 
like like through through logical I forgot what that phrase is when you logically reverse it i don't know but through that maybe we could find out the opposite of it so what happened a lot of people broke up because they were all they were in the home all day talking they got tired of each other there wasn't distance so what naturally happened a lot i, I got a lot of work <laughs> like, oh my god this is we need another pandemic man hurry up like this was this was a, <laughs> I know so fucked up. Um, this was crazy, man. How much work I had during that time, man. It, it was I was like I, I gotta take a break, guys. Um, and the reason why it's because people were just around each other too much. They could not have stopped seeing each other. They were bored. On top of that, emotionally drained, maybe emotionally unhealthy because we weren't going out. So it wasn't just the fact that we weren't giving each other distance. There were other factors. But if we could imagine that that's not, in, that's not good enough distance, that's like a, a bad healthy of undistance, I don't know if that's even a word, then we could imagine that maybe the opposite is where you're, you and the person have their own lives. Like where, where you have things to do where they're not around you all the time. Clearly you can't make permanent distance. I mean, that's obvious. But you, I think the key to this type of distance that I'm talking about is literal distance from time to time. Doing things without them. Going on vacation without them sometimes. I don't know if that's proper for you guys, but going on vacation with your boys or with your girls. Um, having activities that you don't let them participate in because you just want to do it. And if it, if it offends them, then okay. I mean, it offends you, but you'll get over it. You know, like that's, I think, in my opinion, those are healthy distances. Like, I think it's required. And if the man does not want you to have that distance, he wants to possess all of your time, then, I mean, I don't think that's good, you know? So it's not about pushing them away. It's just about having a healthy level. And what that is depends on each person. Like, I can't tell you what's a healthy level of distance, but I could tell you what's an unhealthy level of non-distance. It's, it's not even a word, right? Closest, there you go. I don't know. Proximity, there you go. Too much proximity. Um, too much proximity is not good, but after that, the amount of distance just depends on each other, and you have to get, get, you have to experiment. And some of us don't even experiment. Some of us, we feel so anxious at being away from our partners that we can't create that because we feel like we're risking losing them. You know, so it's, we're gonna talk about how to create that self-assuredness, how to create that self-love, because it's really just lack of self-love. Um, but you have to risk losing them. And it comes down to just creating distance, you know? And a big part also is, is speaking, that, is speak, saying that to them. A lot of us will not say that to them. A lot of us will be afraid to say I want distance. We, we naturally, some, some of us, at least me, I don't like to offend people. At least me, I tend to be a little bit of a people pleaser. So I have a hard time saying, hey, yo, you know, you need to go. Like, I, I gotta just rest by myself, looking at the ceiling. Like, <laughs> like get out, you know? So it's, it's hard for people who are, who have a natural disposition to be nice, to express that. And that actually sabotages them, sabotages the relationship because then they complain about the fact that they don't have enough distance. When the fact that when they were the ones wanting this closeness. People are twisted like that. Um, but when it comes to like, like having an audience, like an employee, or even, or even fans, right? Or even people who follow you, you have to have some distance. Because the closer you, they get to you, the less they see the mysticism, the less they see the, the charisma. The closer they get, the less the charisma lessens. But also, the more they actually get to know you. And that's totally fine, right? But like I said, when somebody really gets to know you, they don't really, listen not that they listen but it's almost like when you have your friend someone's like knowing um like my friends right they're like they follow you Alexis. i'm like yeah like they, they listen to what you say i'm like yeah they're like dude you're just Alexis. i'm like i know but they they see me differently they have this this is aura of charisma behind the things that i say right so that closeness is great for developing relationship but that closeness is not good for creating that illusion of charisma Right, so this does not apply to close relationships. Now, you could create the charisma through you as a woman having masculine traits. That's, that's possible. You as a woman and as a man, feminine traits in the opposite direction. You as a woman having your own independence, being willing to walk away, developing self-love, and naturally creates a natural distance because you're not so hung up on them, right? 
but the distance that we talked about yesterday, about having symbols around him, and you could do the whole symbol thing where you had, it, actually what's beautiful is that, that whole, like, I'm going out Friday night I'm a, and I'm gonna have that Cinderella effect, that, is, that actually really does work, where you dress normal, but then once a week you dress and you just pop out of nowhere. That's beautiful, that's incredible, that's great, that's contrast, that's a difference, right? But it just comes down to undulating it, where in, in where you either dressing or where you either dress super feminine all the time, and then from time to time you dress masculine, or you dress down all the time, but then from time to time you spark it up a bit. The point is just to find that balance and switch it up from time to time because men are visual, right? Um, does that make sense? Yeah. So it's not just about the yesterday part. Does not apply to closeness. So that's like very important. Because then a lot of people would just like, it would just ruin relationships if you go too much with what I said yesterday. Um, I have to ask a question. What's up? Um, what's the balance? If you're, if you're an influencer on social media, what's the balance between like, um, sharing your personal life and then um, having a not-personal life? Like, what's the difference between that? Like, what's the balance between that? Well, like, okay, so the balance between your personal life and having a social influence and your, the people follow you. Yeah. So they have something to uh, relate to. I know what you mean. Yeah, it is a balance, right? Like, um, how much should I share? Like, the mystery aspect of it. Um, you know, I don't think there's a right answer to that because, like, because I, I've seen so many YouTubers who you only know their names or you just know a fake name of theirs. But in my opinion, I don't think it's ever changed the way I, like, listen to them all i know is that in sports the access to see the personal lives of athletes causes us to not see them as like godlike it, it, it kind of demystifies their godlike aura that's why people have to understand one of the reasons why jordan is still so relevant is the fact that he's hardly around you rarely see jordan you rarely see him in the streets you rarely see him do interviews even michael jackson when he was alive you rarely saw him do interviews and he had this mysticism, this like presence about him. It was because of the, there wasn't, you didn't know so much about him. And so your mind then like fills in the gaps and that feeling of the gap, assuming, trying to find out how he is, his personality, or, or where, where does he come from? Or how, how, did, how did he get so good without knowing the backstory? It's what creates that awestruck when you see him in person. Like that awestruck is the accumulation of all of those unknown things of all of those gaps that you don't know creates that like, oh my Lord, it's him, you know? Um, and it's, if, you're, if I was a celebrity, like a big celebrity, I wouldn't have Instagram. I mean, it's like, yeah, you do gain in terms of exposure, you know, but you do lose in terms of charisma. Like the, the, the celebrities that, that don't have Instagram, they, they're more mysterious. They may not have the most advertisement, but I could promise you they, they are more, they, they're more interesting because you're like, huh, what is he doing? Huh, interesting. Like, they're not as human in our minds. They're more non-human. And when I say non-human, it's more so like amongst the gods. They have more of an aura, you know? And that aura comes from not knowing. It's, it's the not notness than the knowing of it, you know? But we just, we, we overshare too much. You know, we overshare. Um, it is one thing good that I did with my YouTube is not to give my name all the time, Delexis, but they call me Alex. But I'm like, I don't want people to, there's another Delexis out there that's a fitness coach. I'm like, keep, yeah, I want them, I want them to find that dude, not me. Um, does that make sense? Kind of, yeah, it just depends, bro. Um, I would prefer not to tell you everything, not to say everything about you, you know, and keep some things private. Um, like people don't know I had girlfriends. I don't say it. <laughs> I had girlfriends and I just don't say it on YouTube. You know, some things not everyone should know, you know? Then they'd be like, oh, where's his girlfriend? Well, well she's, she's chilling, bro. Like, I don't, you know, like it's, it's, she's relaxing. She's, she's somewhere there, you know, watching the videos, making sure I don't say the wrong things, <laughs> which is many. Um, any other questions about yesterday? Just to make sure. Okay, good, good. So like I said, um, you guys are gonna, the hardest part about this is that some of your compulsions, because it is true, some of your natural personality traits are gonna get in the way of this. It might be your oversharing, 
It might be that you might talk too much. It might be the way you react to anxiety. Um, it might be that you think you are one way when in reality you're not, and people might see the complete opposite. Your lack of awareness of how you come across will create problems when it comes to applying things that I talked about yesterday. Um, so you're gonna have to create some awareness of it, and that is not easy, because when you become aware, what naturally happens is that you feel like shit. You feel like complete, you might even feel embarrassed. Like it's, a, it's never like a happy moment. Like, oh my God, I'm a fucking weirdo. Oh Lord, thank you. No, you're like, oh my God, oh Lord. I, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do that to you in the past. Like you start like looking like you just came out of AA, man. Like you, it's it's never a good feeling when you realize the mistakes that you made. It really isn't. It's it's could be very depressing. Um, so you got to work on finding out how does insecurity manifest your, itself in you? Because a lot of times, most likely, if if we're really insecure, we're not going to admit it to ourselves. We're insecure. I'm telling you, you're not going. You're going to think you're more confident than you really are. That, that's just how it is. And, and you'll notice because in your life, the confidence that you think you feel, people don't like you as much as you think you should be liked. Like that, that just shows you that there is a chasm. They're doing something wrong. And, and a lot of times, we're not gonna assume that we're doing something wrong. We're gonna think that they're just assholes. When in reality, we are the one that's causing it. It's the, most, it's the craziest thing on the planet. You think the asshole you see in the corner thinks he's an asshole? He doesn't, he thinks you're the asshole. With complete conviction. And, and honestly, that is the hardest part, is realizing your flaws, realizing where you're the one that's causing the miscommunications, the problems, because at the end of the day, it is miscommunication. That's all it is. So I, I, I I'll tell you what I told you yesterday, and then you'll, you'll go wherever you go, and you'll just completely forget to do it. What's up? So just the question about yesterday, if you don't mind. So after yesterday, I uh, reflected on what you were saying. And like, personally, I had an interest in politics, right? So I, when I went home, I Googled the world's most influential female politicians, the world's most charismatic female politicians. And I found people like, you know, Angela Merkel, and then there was Ellen Johnson, who I completely forgot she was the first female African leader. Oh, for real? Yeah, wow. of Liberia, and then Michelle Obama. Then I thought, is it just a matter of copying their dress sense and looking like them? Or is it more complex? I mean, a big part is the image, the external image, what you see. Yeah. There is an archetype. There is a, um, there is a, there is an archetype that's already been successful. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. Like, all of these spiritual gurus, they all look the same. Like the oh the long beard the 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 hmm like the, the they, it's a it's a it's like a uniform. How do you want to how if you want to be respected as a cop? What do you do? You dress like a cop. If you want to be respected as a pilot, you dress like a pilot. If you want to be respected as a spiritual guru, dress like a spiritual guru. Like it's, a, it's a, that's a crazy part. It's all in uniform, people. Find your uniform and dress like a uniform. I thought to myself, there's nothing new on the It must just be about people. Yeah, not people. exactly. Okay. They're already, and so you look, or you just look for combinations. Oh, I like the way he does this. I like that, and like that, I like that. And then you create one, an image, based on different images that worked. The point is, don't reinvent the wheel. Because then, yeah, you could come up with new shit, but most likely you won't, mm -hmm. you know? So just reinvent it, and, and just build it up, um, build it on yourself. Um, and we just don't put thought into that. that that's, it's as simple as that, people. It really is not that difficult. When you think of anyone who you like, who has a unique style, who has a charisma about them, and look at it from the lens of yesterday's um, talk, you'll, you'll be like, oh, that's why I like them. Oh, that's why they're so interesting. Like, you'll see it. The problem is that when we're experiencing that, that, um, that phenomenon of somebody who's highly influential, we're, we're so enamored by their influence that we're not thinking straight. We're just like, oh my God, they're so interesting. We're not saying, oh, he's wearing that, he's wearing that. We're not thinking logically because we're, we're thinking irrationally because it's all irrational. It's not meant to make sense. So this causes a projection where you stop seeing reality and you're just seeing like, a, 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 like your emotions in a person. Like, I don't, I don't know how to explain it, you know? So they're not gonna catch on. They're not gonna. They're not gonna be like, oh, she's got that Hillary Clinton vibe. She's doing that. You know, she she she's got that 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 Obama thing too. She's a combination. Like she's just, they're not gonna think that. They're just gonna be like, 
oh wow, that's like that's interesting. They're just gonna take in the the whole image rather than breaking it down into steps. Mm -hmm. That's what I would do. I'd be like, oh look at that, that's that like Obama archetype. That's interesting. Like for example, um, you guys know who um, for like a lot of leaders in the United States. Um, who who are like who are pro-black? They give off this Martin, that Martin Luther King. They give they give off the they'll look like Malcolm X, where they'll get the glasses. Like they'll go they'll give off that Malcolm X vibe. They'll dress like Malcolm X. There's even this like white guy who's they call him Talcum X because he's he's light skin, but tr but looks like Malcolm X. You see, you heard of him, right? Yeah, but he but it works. It works, and people follow it. Right? So you just have to become that symbol, a visual symbol, and you'll just, like magic, people will begin to like follow it. You never become like a wannabe. Mm -hmm. You never become like a wannabe. Like a copy, like a copycat. I mean. People see like that. No, that's, that the problem is that people, people assume you are who you present to be. Maybe your friends who saw the transformation. Uh, like, you're like, what the fuck? Yeah. Like, why are you looking at like Malcolm X now? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right? Like, they were like, oh. But the pe to the people, but the, like I said yesterday, they're not the people you're trying to recruit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like, like, so you're going to get people who are going to be like, oh, what the fuck are you doing now? Now you look like Jesus? <laughs> like, 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 now you're Jesus? Why are you calling yourself Jesus? So they're going to stop being your friends. But then, like, like, Melissa would just think you're Jesus, you know? Yeah. Like, it's so, so it's kind of like, it comes with a sacrifice, right? That's why it's better for it to come from yourself, right? Because then it'll be gradual. People will notice it, but they'll be like, well, that's kind of like him. He is kind of like that. You know, so it won't be such a drastic change as opposed to, unless you want to move to another state and just change the way you look drastically, which people do that too. That's, they, they start new in a new place and they change their image and people treat them differently, right? So, you know, you, you, that's a big one is that you, you, gotta be a, you gotta be okay with some people being a little uncomfortable with your new image per se, but they you have to almost like keep in mind that this is just a public image. Like all of these celebrities, once they're done, they're like, oh fuck, let me remove the makeup on. They're like, oh that was a long day, man. You know, Michael Jackson could like he he, he may have talk. People have a joke where they say he talks like this, but when he comes home, he's like, man, that was tough. Oh my God, that was a tough, that was tough. I'm like, what the fuck, Michael, that's how you talk? I'm like, oh, sorry, sorry about that. Like, it could, it could be true, right? You know that, um, that lady, Holmes, the lady who like, um, the fake Steve Job lady? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Isabel Holmes. Huh? Isabel Holmes. Huh? Elizabeth Holmes. Yeah. Yeah. I was talking about yesterday, I was talking about her. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, I mean, uh, She's a, wow, she does a, the no blinking shit. Blink, yeah. yeah, I know, yeah. And then she talks in like a, a deeper voice on purpose. Mm -hmm. Well, the deeper voice thing is that when a deeper voices are just interpreted as more competent. You see, that's psychopathic level right there, okay? We're not talking about that. But that's an extreme version of this, where she was able to scam for, for billions. I mean, that's how crazy this, this whole game is, where you could take it to that extreme. And she understood the game. See, that's the thing is that she was evil enough to instinctively understand this because she doesn't give a fuck about being fake. We do. We got some. We got some sense. Of, well, hopefully, right? <laughs> some of you guys are like, no. <laughs> like, we got some sense to, to, you know, to, 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 you know, like not go too far with this, right? To keep it in line with who we are, right? So she understood it and look what she was able to do. She understood that looking simple, that giving the image off, the way that she spoke, she had a complete understanding of human nature when it comes to the game of, of appearances. And she really wasn't charismatic. She just knew how to portray charisma. So, do you believe that anybody can do that? Yeah, that, yeah. To that, maybe not to that level. Not to that level. But, but anybody can be asked. Some level, yeah, some level to that you could. But again, it's at a distance. Because when people get close and, they, and, and the image you have is too different, then, you know, eventually it might, you know, people might say, oh, he's not really like that in real life. But again, as long as you don't take that image seriously, mm -hmm. as long as you don't take it like, you're like, yes, I am. Yeah. Then like, you'd be like, no, of course, it's just an image, bro. Like, I'm just, it's just, a, it's just an image. You know, you don't take it seriously. It's like an LLC in the United States. It's like a, a, a um, what do you call that LLC? But it's like a, an entity. Yeah, it's like an entity. They can't sue you. They can only sue 
the corporation. This is like a corporate version. Your public, yeah, a public representative. representative. Hmm? The PR exactly, like an exaggerated version of you, or even a tailored version to get an effect. But you don't take it personal, because once you start taking it personal, then you're 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 walking in the lines of psychopathy, right? You gotta just like just be, be happy about it, laugh about it. If somebody wants wants to make fun of it, just be like, oh, it's just. It's just, you know, amongst you guys. Or like, if you're a boss, they'll be like, oh, you're such an asshole. In your mind, you're like, well, that's, I'm just playing a game with you, man. I'm just your boss, bro. Like, you, you sit them apart, you're like, look, bro, I'm not trying to be an asshole to you. I just cannot be serious with you all the time. I gotta be serious with you. I'm just your boss, you know? So let's just, just, just go with it. You, you get what I'm saying? Like, you gotta be able to let this go. You can't just hold on to it. You're like, oh, that's how I really am. Or else, it's just, it's just not that good. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's, that's actually very important. You can't take this too seriously. Um, the, at least the first part. But, but this part that we're gonna talk about is once they get close, right? Um, once, once they get close, how to project the charisma. And this type of charisma is not a, a charisma of a certain personality trait you don't possess. We're not trying to give you a, a new personality trait. We're not trying to make you act any other different. What we're trying to do is make you, is, is allow you to act how you really are from within you. Who you were as a child, who you were when you weren't self-conscious of how, what other people thought of you, who you were before you got traumatized by life, you know, that's almost everyone. Because in, when you were a child, you were completely yourself. You, you were your most charming. And there was a certain level of charisma that that unrepressed nature of your childlike self emanated. And that's what we're gonna be tapping into today. There's nothing fake about this. And I think that this part is, in my opinion, the best part, all right? So we're gonna take like a quick two minute break, you know, cause we're, we've been talking for 30 minutes and we're gonna begin with that. Hey, thank you for watching the whole video. I mean, you really must have liked it if you watched all the way to the end. Um, anyways, um, so click in the description down below, check it out. Um, you guys can have a 15, no, I think it's a 14 day money back guarantee if you guys don't like it. Six hour course, five to six hour course. Um, most likely it's not complete. I may add some more information because I always add new stuff to my courses throughout the years. Um, but it's a, it's a course, it's, it's, look man, if you're somebody that has a job, if you're an employee, an employer, if you're a teacher, if you work any type of working with people, you need you need to know how to project some form of charisma, because that's where people will see you with a higher level of respect. That's just how life is. Um, so if you guys ever, if you guys want to create that effect without being fake, or if you want to do that and create some superficial forms of charisma for a temporary solution, then you could check out the course. Click on the description down below, and I'll see you guys inside. Take you. Thank you.